just gonna let that cool down naturally, take its time, I'll go make a tea. The hand wheel's now wound up a little bit. This is all part of the jig now, that's welded in place. So the threaded insert that we just welded on the little arrows is in there now. So this is the part that's going in next. I need that to be a nice, tight, snug fit. So I've got this huge chunk of brass. The outer diameter will fit in here. And then we'll drill a hole through the middle that fits nice and snug over there. Welcome to another video. As you've just seen, I have turned down that big chunk of brass, snug fit through there, and then the outer collar, which I don't have. Then the cast part, the collar that is being set in the machine, fits over that nicely. So it's a really good, nice fit. I'm very pleased. I'm ticking jobs off. This is very good. We are getting somewhere. You'll be familiar with this one from last week's video. Um, if you notice, it's changed color. The babbit that holds these in place basically needs to stick to the, this component and to the main body, the iron frame. To, for that, for the best sort of adhesion possible, I need to tin both parts. Um, it's almost like when you solder something and then you put a bit of solder, if you're familiar with soldering, when you tin something, like at the end of a wire, you're just coating it in a very fine layer of tin or lead, whatever the material is that you're doing. Um, and I've got a tinning sort of butter, like a paste. So I'm, I'm coating these parts in a thin layer of the, essentially of the babbit, of like the, of the sort of lead material. Um, it's worked really well. I'm really, really pleased with that. So I've now got the other part, the cast bit with the little nubblings on the outside. That is actually in the oven upstairs. I've taken my pizza out already for lunch. So yeah, we're okay to put parts in the oven. I'm gonna get it to about 200 degrees-ish. I've got my little laser thermometer to have a look. I bet you're all guilty of it at some point, either putting parts in the dishwasher or in the oven. Then I'll bring it down here, put it on this little hot stone that I've got, and I'll just heat areas up, wipe over this tinning butter, like this tinning paste, um, and that is hopefully gonna melt the material and stick to the part. So we should be left with a nice shiny part. I've got one more little bit to make at the top to set the, to fix the top axle to my jig, uh, and that will be the next thing that we do. But we are getting closer and closer to pouring that babbit. It's getting exciting.
cool down again, nice and slowly. I'll leave it there for a bit, make a tea. Goodness me, that was, <laughs> that was my first time having a go at doing that. I'm sure there's a lot of you out there shouting at your screens, being like, Tom, what are you doing? Why are you doing it like that? But I've never done this before, so this is a very new experience for me. Um, I have spoken to a few people and got some advice from some professionals, um, and I think I'm going along the right lines. I guess this is the point of this whole project, trial and error. If it goes wrong, I'll melt it all out and start again. And I doubt very much that I'll get it all right first time, but that's all part of the fun, isn't it? I am still getting to grips with the new lathe. Uh, oh dear. It's been sick. Now, I think that means I've put too, <laughs> too much cutting fluid in it. Oh, it's going everywhere. And I don't even know if I've got a mop here. Lesson learned. Don't overfill the fluids. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> so this frame in the middle is Anthony's one. That's the original one. That's the first one that I stripped down and bit the bullet and melted out all of the babbit from the, around where these parts are fixed in. At the very start of the process, this then went to Paul. He did his drawings and his measurements and it went up to Chris at the foundry. This is the one that's well traveled. <laughs> it's been everywhere. Everything was absolutely fine. I stripped the paint off, it was all looking really good. As soon as I heated it up to melt out the babbit to get the axles out, something became very apparent. I didn't cover it at the time because I was waiting until this moment to talk about it. I think one or two people noticed in the comments, uh, but I sort of didn't make a thing of it and I didn't really want to discuss it then because we were doing different things then. But to say I was a little bit gutted was an understatement. This section here, on the frame is cracked. So you can see there is a crack running all the way down. Now that is not just a cosmetic kind of surface little hairline or something like that. It is absolutely a structural crack and it's bad news. But so I think this was my under my I'm guessing here that what I think happened was the metal, the white metal became loose. Someone's drilled a hole. That hole is not original. That should not be there. So I think somebody's drilled and tapped that, put a bolt in there, done that up to try and hold this nice and still. And in doing that up, put too much pressure on the casting and it's cracked. It's given way and it's split there. Because actually, it's quite thin. It gets thinner than that inside. It's probably 10 mil or so, maybe less. And someone lent on this bolt a little bit too much and it's cracked it. Now, I wasn't really that bothered at the time because I thought, oh, well, it doesn't matter. I'm making new ones. All I want is the size, the dimensions, to use it as a template to make the wooden pattern, which I've done and it's worked fantastically. But all is not lost. I'm going to treat this now, <laughs> this well-traveled frame, is my little guinea pig to test out this jig. So I'm not going to start with number one of the new castings. These two, either side, are number one and number two. I'm going to do all my trial and error and testing on this Anthony's little broken guinea pig one. A service I really want to offer once I'm up and running with the Ranella business is to take in people's original machines, fix any holes like this. And so I want to be able to offer a service where I can recondition people's original machines. You can send your original Ranella to me. I will melt, do exactly what I've done to this one melt the babbit out, remove the axles. If they're worn, put new axles in and you can have the original frame with all brand new axles or all the original, original axles can go back in and we can deal with anything like this. Parts can be worn, parts can be damaged and the babbit can be loose and we can, you know, we can reset that. And that's the whole, that's the beauty of these axles being set in this white metal. You can just heat it up, melt it out and set, reset it with this jig. This, that's why I've spent so long trying to get this whole sort of jig and fixture set up right, because it's gonna be completely invaluable when I come down later down the line to try and set these things up. So this little guinea pig, now I'm gonna to attempt to weld this crack back up. So I'm going to cut this back, grind this back, 
expose like a V, weld that back together, and then that is really gonna be good as new. So I've brought down my oxycetylene set from the repair shop, which is a very hot gas, uh, because the first thing I need to do is get some heat into this frame. Things are gonna get hot and I'm not risking burning my jumper again. This time, I am gonna wear my welding jacket. This is like sort of your normal oxyacetylene torch, but times six. This is gonna create a huge flame so I can actually warm up the whole front end of the Ranola. If cast iron heats up and cools down too quickly, it can cause problems, things can crack, and it can start causing issues. So the best thing to do whenever we're welding cast iron, I find, is to warm it up, get it nice and warm beforehand, do the weld, keep it cool as possible, and then I might just give it a little bit of heat afterwards as well and just let it cool down nice and slowly. I could see the crack going through and you kind of grinding through it until you get to good, clean, solid metal. And I think I'm there. I haven't gone all the way through, which is great, but I'm gonna put some heat on it now. When you heat the metal, it expands ever so slightly and it will show up. If there is a crack, I'll be able to see it. I think I've got it. As I was getting nearer the top, it was getting hotter and hotter, and it was just, uh, I didn't want to get things too hot. The whole point was trying to keep the temperature of the casting fairly consistent, and the more you're welding, the more you're introducing too much heat and it, in one spot, and then it would start cracking if I was not careful. A Couple of places it did, but then I ground it back out and re-welded it, and this time, it seems to have got it really nice. Um, I'm really pleased. Whether it's gonna hold or not is yet to be seen not too long ago, earlier in the video, these bits that sit inside the frame, I've tinned the surface. That is to help the, to make the babbit bite and bond onto it and stick to it, basically. I need to try and do the same thing to the inside of that hole in the frame. Tin that new bit really well, and around the edge it's tinned, but not so much in there. What a pain. I really thought that would work. I've got a feeling it's because inside that hole is not clean enough, because the areas where I've ground it down, 
and the cast iron went sort of shiny silver. It has tinned. I went around it with a wire wheel, wire brush, scrubbed it, degreased it, made it as clean as I could. It hasn't taken, the tin has not taken. Um, not very well anyway. That has not worked. Back to the drawing board. Anyone out there that's used to tinning complicated big cast iron things, please let me know. The cast iron, this is an original machine. It's obviously 80 odd years old. I cleaned it, I got it up to 200, it's about 250 degrees, roughly. Plenty hot enough because the areas that were new, that were clean, had tinned really nicely. So I knew it was up to temperature. It was definitely hot enough, but it just didn't take inside the hole. Maybe I need to get it sandblasted. Maybe that's the best option, just to sandblast inside the hole, to strip it back, to remove any grease or anything like that. But then I did, I wire wheeled it, I cleaned it. I don't know, I'm not sure why it didn't work, but I'm gonna go make a cup of tea and sit and have a think and try again. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Oh, let me come outside. Goodness. I've got two different types of tinning sort of paste almost. One's got lead in, one hasn't. I think I've had better success with the one that has lead in it. The whole top edge now has taken and it's all looking good. When the original Babbitt came out, inside was just cast iron colour. So I don't actually think Ranola, when they made this wheeling machine new, I don't think they tinned the inside of the housing or the parts because neither part, the parts that came out and the inside of the housing were just bare metal. So I, I'm kind of like questioning myself now. I'm thinking actually, hang on, maybe they didn't tin the inside of the housing or the parts. They just relied on the Babbitt to set hard in the void and the welds around the edge and things like that to just hold it in place. I'm gonna stay for another couple of hours and see if I can get further on with the, with the tinning. Because I feel like I would get a better joint, a better bond, if I've tinned both parts. Uh, it makes sense to me. My brother Dan is coming up tomorrow to help me to finish off the jig and probably help me tin these parts. We're going to melt some Babbitt and pour it in there and see if we can set some parts in that original frame. See if we can get it working again. Oh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Sorry there's not been tons of progress, but well, there kind of has. We're another step closer. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Please make sure you subscribe to really appreciate it. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. I've got it, I've done it. It was just a technique. It had to take me a few hours to figure it all out, but I've done it. The inside of that is perfectly tinned all the way. Both lips, inside lip, everything. It's nice and shiny in there, nice and clean and completely tinned. Yes. I ended up using a rotary wire brush on a drill to kind of like, rub it, grind it into the, the rough texture of the cast iron that it just didn't want to take to. In the next video, we are definitely going to pour some Babbitt into that perfectly tinned area. That's going to make a really nice bond and there's no way that's going to break free. Oh, I'm so pleased.